What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Today, I have a heat wave special for you and for me as well, since it's hotter than a $2 pistol out there, and I'm sick of sweating. So I thought, why don't we lower the temperature a little bit and test some really cold welds? So that's what we're going to do today. Let's get into it. So what I have in front of us is a magical box, and in that magical box, I can make welds and steel very cold. But no, seriously, what we got today is a couple test plates, and we're going to chill them down to absurdly low temperatures, and then we're going to bend test them to see if they pass. Now, this is a 7018 weld I already ran, no defects on it. We're going to cool this down in the cooler, get it super cold, and bend test it. I already have uh, a set of plates in there on ice cooling down where we're going to weld it when they're like negative probably 50 or colder. So you're probably wondering what's in this cooler. What I have is dry ice, which all dry ice is, is the solid form of CO2, and it's super cold. It's probably like negative 150 degrees or lower. And by resting a set of plates in there, I can make them stupidly cold. So let's pull them out, inspect them, and then get to welding. So as you can see, they are ice cold. As a matter of fact, they're reading negative 30s, negative 50. So I don't think you're ever going to weld on something colder than these. So what I'm going to do is be pretty quick about it. I'm going to clean this frost off just enough to get a weld on it, clamp them together, and then just give it the beans. So let's go and weld them. All right, here are the plates that were cold that I welded. I let it get back to room temperature. I was actually shocked at how hot the top of this plate was. It was over 200 degrees just after welding. So that negative 50, 60 temp that this steel was, and it had been marinating in that cooler for about three hours. So it was definitely cold all the way through. Didn't really seem to matter, but you know, stick welding puts a massive amount of heat into something. So I guess that's not too surprising. Had this been like one inch thick pipe or something out in Alaska, like uh, one of the viewers had mentioned, that would be a whole different ball game because it wouldn't have warmed up hardly at all, I don't think. So definitely preheat in that case would make a huge difference. So what we're going to do with this guy is just throw it in a shot press since it's room temperature now, bend it and see if it fails. The other plates that I welded are in the cooler cooling off, so we'll bend those in a bit. All right, let's bend this and see if it breaks. And it failed. Interesting. Let's go back to the bench. 
Well, that other plate's still cooling off. Let's talk about this bend test where it broke. Now, this is quite interesting. I've never seen anything like this, but the weld, you can see a line where it's sticking above the plate. So that's still the weld, like that's the weld penetration, but somehow it left that and peeled the weld off of itself. So some of the weld that's into this plate is still there, but the whole weld peeled off. That's something I wouldn't have expected. I expected the weld just to basically break down the middle, but it left part of it there and just tore through. Now, it took quite a bit of force to break this. It bent pretty far, but it still ultimately failed. And I've done plenty of these with 7018 and never had one fail that was done at room temperature. So I would say conclusively, if you weld on super cold steel, that you're going to have a reduction, at least in the ductility of the weld and possibly in the strength. Now, I know like Sharpie testing where they take a specimen and cool it down to super cold temperatures and then do a impact test, that drastically affects the impact loading of a weld when it's cold. So without a doubt, super cold makes things more brittle. But in this case, we had room temperature welds that were just done on cold plates and it still caused a, a drastic change in the performance of it. And like I said, I've never seen something break like that where it leaves a thin layer completely of the original weld and just breaks off. Pretty interesting. Now, you might be thinking that hydrogen embrittlement might be playing a role in this. And here's my take on that. I wouldn't think so, and the reason's simple. I have welded with soaking wet rods and been tested them without a failure. And on all the 7018 passes I've done and bent, the only time I see a failure on them is if I do something really stupid that you shouldn't do, like dip it in water and then try and bend test it. So yeah, pretty interesting. And it goes without saying, I've done a lot of work in negative 15, negative 20, and I always preheat the steel outside to at least 150 degrees before I attempt to weld on it. Not only does it weld better, but I always was told, you know, make sure that the crap isn't super cold you're welding on because it can affect the strength and well this test at least on a simple surface value proves that yes it does have an effect to it and it's probably a detriment not something you want all right well let's go grab that other test plate that's ice cold and toss it in the press so this sucker's at about negative 40 right now i don't know if you can tell by how smoky it is let's bend it Broke at the very last minute. Wow. All right, let's go to the weld bench. So this sucker is still ice, ice cold. It didn't warm up as much as I would have thought it would have. And interestingly enough, it broke clean through the plate. 
and it has a very rough grain appearance to it. So the weld itself, it broke at the tow line. Part of the weld did fail, but more or less the whole plate broke through, which if you think of it, the amount of stress being put on that and likely the loss of ductility being that it was negative 40 contributed to this. I've never seen this kind of a grain structure on a break though. That's pretty interesting and likely due to the really low temperatures that this was when it was bent. But the results are a lot different. Obviously because this plate was at room temperature, the plate itself had a little bit more give than this did. But both of them ultimately failed before a normal 7018 weld would have. And let me go and grab one. So here's a 6010 root, two bead, 7018 cap, and then just a single stringer weld of 7018. And both of these far surpassed the bend on than those did. And that's to be expected. 7018 is very strong. However, all welds and all materials, when they become super cold, will become more or less brittle. Uh, steel is no exception, even mild steel. So pretty interesting results. Kind of what I expected, but I got to be honest, these things took a lot more force than I would have bet on uh, before they failed. All right, let's go to conclusion. Well, what did we learn today? I learned that cold steel does not perform as good as room temperature steel, but who would have guessed that, right? I think we all knew that that was going to be the case. I got to be honest, I, the really cold weld that I bent that was welded at room temperature performed far better than I thought it would. And this one that was welded on cold plates, honestly, I don't know, I would have thought a little bit better results than what we saw. But hey, there's a, an exact reason why you don't weld on negative 40 plates. The performance becomes lessened. But quite an interesting topic to cover I appreciate the person that recommended this in a roundabout way because this was really fun to do and I learned a bunch which well like I said don't be welding on negative 40 steel and this also brings up a real interesting thought which is if it's stupidly cold where you're at uh, you can expect that if you impact something that's welded that you put together like say a part on a trailer or on a dozer or anything you can expect a higher probability of that weld failing and shattering with a really rough grain structure than what it would at room temperature or higher. So that's pretty interesting. Something that maybe you should plan ahead for in those kind of environments. And that's why like on pipelines in Alaska and all over in cold environments, Russia, that special precautions are generally taken to eliminate issues. Like I was talking with an individual about welding on pipe in Alaska and he was saying that they would tent heat the whole section that they were welding on. Well, that was probably to prevent what we saw here from happening. No, no doubt that weld when it's buried on that pipe underground is going to get stupidly cold anyways. But by eliminating any variable and welding at at least room temperature or hotter, you're just eliminating so many potential variables like hydrogen embrittlement for one. And the other one is that I didn't really mention is when the plates are super cold, it really doesn't weld the best. It's kind of a little bit different than normal and that could throw off a weld to where you might not pass x-ray. And that's the last thing you want is to be in the middle of nowhere and have it grind out a weld and spend more time trying to get it done to pass. So all important things to consider. Anyways, hopefully you guys aren't dying in this heat wave. It's stupidly hot. Go get yourself a cold frosty mug and put your favorite beverage in it for me. Until next time.